Whether you're new to the iPhone or you just want to increase your battery life, security, performance, and customization of your device, I'm going to give you 27 settings you can change right now to help with all of that, including updates in iOS 17 and features coming very soon like stolen device protection, which you should turn on as soon as it comes out. First, let's change some settings to get better battery life on our iPhone. I'm gonna go to the settings app and go down to display and brightness. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see an option that says auto lock. Now I have this on as never right now because I'm filming a video, but typically I have this on 30 seconds. Your display being on is one of the biggest drains to battery. And if you have that on several minutes and you leave your iPhone and don't lock it manually, that's a lot of battery that's just being wasted. So typically I leave this on 30 seconds. That means my iPhone will go to sleep after 30 seconds of inactivity. Also, if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or 15 Pro, you can disable the always on display. I've actually found I do prefer it. It automatically turns off when the phone is in your pocket or if the phone is face down. I haven't seen this impact my battery life a ton, but it'll save you some battery and you can toggle that off here in the always on display settings. Next up is auto brightness. This is actually moved to the accessibility settings. If I go to accessibility and then to display and text size, scroll all the way down to the bottom and now you'll see auto brightness is found here. I kind of wish this was still in the display and text size settings because I think it would be seen by more people, but this is the setting where your iPhone will dim the screen depending on your ambient light. Again, typically I have this toggled on and that's what I would suggest. So if you're in a dim room, the screen will dim. I have this toggled off right now, again, because I'm filming a video. Another big battery drain will be apps that access your location in the background. I'm gonna scroll down and go to privacy and security here in the settings. But if you go to the location services option at the top, these are all the third party applications locations that may or may not have access to your location. Apps that have a small location arrow next to the name means that this app has access to your location in the last 24 hours. Obviously some third party apps like Google Maps, if you use that, you do want it to be able to access your location since you need that for turn by turn directions. But apps like Facebook, I never ever wanted to have my location or access it in the background. So I set that to never. You might also see the option to ask the next time you actually use the app or when you share something from the app while using the app specifically, only when it's on screen or always, and you also have the toggle for precise location. For a lot of apps, I have precise location turned off, but for apps like Lyft or Uber, it will need to know your location for the car to pick you up. Also, if you scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see system services. These are services that Apple is actually using to ping your location. Now, I leave all of these toggled on because there are lots of features where I do want Apple to know my frequent locations for Siri suggestions, the journal app can offer you places you've been as entry suggestions, which if you want to see my video on the Apple journal app, you can check that out above or the links in the description. But as you can see, it does access your location pretty often. You can disable certain toggles, but again, I think it might lessen your experience on the iPhone. Instead, I would recommend just disabling it from third party apps, especially if you've seen them access your location in the last 24 hours and you didn't expect that. All right, the next setting is actually low power mode. If I go back to the main settings screen and go down to control center, you can add low power mode as an option here in the control center. Then when I swipe down from the corner, this little battery icon means I can go into low power mode. In case you were wondering what low power mode does, it actually puts that auto lock on 30 seconds automatically. It'll lower that refresh rate, turn off automatic downloads, and everything you see here. Now, one of my favorite automations is actually to automatically enable low power mode once my battery gets underneath a certain percentage. If I go to the shortcuts app, automations tab, I'll hit the plus button, and now one of the triggers for an automation is when the battery gets below a certain level. You can also run automations for when low power mode is enabled or disabled, but here let's choose battery level. And I typically like to do 20%. So when my battery falls below 20%, I like to run immediately. I don't want to have to confirm the automation. And then I'll tap next. And now if I search for low power mode, I can choose that action. And when battery falls below 20%, turn low power mode on. You can also create another automation that will disable low power mode once your battery rises above something like 80%. Actually, I think I'm gonna do it at 50%. And so when my battery rises above 50%, I'll choose that low power mode toggle again, and I'll choose turn low power mode off. Now, if I'm charging my phone and it goes past 50%, I don't have to worry about low power mode anymore. Now this next setting was something specific to iOS 17. If you go to the settings app, we'll go back. And if we choose to go to battery health and charging, here's always the moment where you see your battery percentage. It's a new iPhone 15 Pro Max, so we're still at 100%, that's good. We also have the charging optimization menu right here. Now I choose to keep optimized battery charging on. What this does is when you charge your phone overnight, it will hold it at 8% until the early morning when it knows you're gonna be taking your phone off the charger in an hour or so, and it will finish that last 20% right there at the end. That's because when batteries and other devices sit at 100% for prolonged periods of time, it degrades that battery health. 
so this helps extend the battery just a little more over the life of the device. In iOS 17, there is a new limit to 80% charge. Now, if you really wanted to eke out as much battery life as possible, you could select this and your phone will only charge to 80% no matter how long you leave it on a charger and that can typically add a little bit of life to your battery. I'm not personally doing this and I think it would make getting through the day a lot more difficult many times, but if you really just wanna eke out as many years as possible to not replace the battery, you can enforce that 80% limit here. All right, part two, let's talk about some security settings. The first thing I would do is go to your face ID and passcode settings, and there's a few things here we should adjust. Number one, I would recommend changing your passcode to an alphanumeric passcode. Now with Apple's stolen device protection coming with iOS 17.3, this might not be as necessary, but I like it because A, it uses a smaller keyboard when you're entering your password, so you don't have these huge circles for people sitting behind you at the baseball game to see you put in your passcode. And you can also use long passphrases, even sentences as your device password, which is more secure. I have an entire video on setting those more secure passwords. I'll link it above and in the description, but I like changing this to alphanumeric passcode. I would also scroll further down in this menu. You can toggle on or off certain features that are accessible when the phone is locked. Now this all depends on what level of access you're comfortable with. I like to have my home control accessible even when my phone is locked and live activities. I wanna be able to see those if I'm trying to catch a flight or getting a DoorDash delivery. And of course, I would love to be able to see lock screen widgets on the lock screen and they're actually updated. But if you do have things like Siri enabled when locked, that means someone could potentially call someone or text someone using Siri, even if your phone is locked. Same thing with return missed calls. If this was toggled on and you get that missed call notification on the lock screen, just tapping it would allow you to call it without unlocking your device. You can also access your notification center without your device unlocked, reply to message, and so forth. You can see here, I'm pretty selective about what I enable when my device is locked, but these are some settings you can change to increase the security of your device. Now let's go back out and go to privacy and security. We already did location services, but another thing you can check is contacts. And as you can see, I am not very forthcoming with the contact information on my phone. Keep in mind, you're not just sharing your contact information, but those hundreds or even thousands of phone numbers and emails in your contacts app will be shared with apps when you enable this. Some apps want this simply for autofill options, which is why I have Fantastical enabled. For instance, if I wanna invite someone to an event, I want Fantastical to see my contacts and let me autofill or select an email address from someone I already have saved. But apps like Instagram, TikTok, I don't want them uploading my contacts or having my contacts in any way. Now, if you've already shared your contacts with an app, it might be a little too late and they're already uploaded to their servers, but as you download new apps and you see that pop up for allow access to contacts, I would encourage you to be very choosy about which ones you actually allow to have your contacts. So if we go back to the main settings screen and go back up to our name, which is actually the iCloud settings. Side note, I kind of wish that it actually said iCloud settings because if people aren't familiar, you might not know you can actually tap that and access a whole world of settings underneath it. Just little suggestion for Apple. Now here in iCloud settings, you can also see all the devices that are currently logged into your iCloud account. Every once in a while, it's nice to look through this list and make sure you recognize all the devices listed. But let's go to iCloud here. And if we scroll down, you'll see advanced data protection. This actually encrypts more of the data apart of your iCloud account, such as your iMessage backups. Now, when you turn this on, you'll be given some account recovery codes, and I highly encourage you to print those out, put them in a safe or just a very safe place, and maybe even share those with a trusted friend or contact, because this advanced data protection means if something were to happen to your devices, not even Apple would be able to help you get back into your iCloud account or access any of this data. But I like to have this on because I know my iCloud data is end-to-end -end encrypted, everything listed here. Now, speaking of iCloud, I also wanna make sure my iCloud backup is enabled and there's a recent backup there. That's always a good thing to double check. And in iOS 17.3, you'll be able to enable stolen device protection. This will give you even more security. If someone were to get your iPhone and have your passcode, it will make it harder for thieves to change your Apple ID or iCloud password and get access to things like your saved iCloud passwords in the settings app. Once 17.3 comes out, I highly recommend everyone turn that on. I know I'll be turning it on day one. And one last setting, I put it here in the security section, but when it comes to phone calls and getting those robo phone calls, you can go down to the phone app. I highly recommend silencing unknown callers and you can toggle that on. That means any phone number not currently in your address book will be sent straight to voicemail. You'll still get a voicemail. They have the opportunity to do that but you won't get all those spam and robo calls from people not in your contacts. All right, our third section, customizations. These are just little quality of life improvements that I think when you toggle these on or adjust them how you would like, 
It just makes the experience a lot better. Number one, if we go to the settings app and we go down to home screen and app library, the first setting here is key. Whenever you download a new app, you can choose to only send that app to your app library rather than being on the home screen. I don't know about you, but I take a lot of time making sure my home screens are laid out and designed just how I like. I actually have an entire video on that too. Check it out above, videos in the description. And so I don't like a new app to mess up my home screen layouts or create a whole other home screen that I have to deal with. So I choose app library only. This way, when a new app is downloaded, it just goes straight to the app library on the far right side. If you swipe all the way to the right through your home screens, and you still have access to the app, you can search for it, but it's not gonna take up part of your home screen. In addition, you can toggle on or off that search box on the home screen. If I toggle that on and go home, you'll now see there's a little search command right here, which basically opens Spotlight. But if I toggle that off, it'll take off that little visual search box, but that doesn't mean you can't search. Just swipe down from anywhere on the home screen and you can still access Spotlight and search for whatever you need. Now this next is a big one because it actually affects every app. I'm gonna go to the settings again. Let's go back to the main settings screen and then let's go to control center. Here you can choose what appears in that control center when you swipe down from the top right corner. And I would recommend you add text size as a control center action and here's why. When it's in the control center, you can actually adjust the text size of a specific app rather than the system wide setting. So for instance, if I go to the Threads app, maybe the Threads text is a little too small, but I don't wanna make the text across my entire iPhone larger. Well, when I'm in the Threads app, I can swipe down to the Control Center, go to the Text Size option, and here you'll see I can do Threads only for text size or all apps. If I wanna raise the text size of Threads alone, I can make that a little larger. Maybe I'll bump it up to 120. And now just threads appears with larger text, but all my other apps are unaffected. Next, you can actually do custom vibration patterns for your iPhone. For this, let's go to sounds and haptics in the settings menu. And for something like text tone, whenever we get a new text message, you can choose the sound below, but you can also choose haptics. Here you can choose different vibration patterns, or you can even create a new vibration pattern. If I tap create new, I can now tap with short and long taps, even hold it down for just constant vibration, and this will create a new pattern that I can then use for any text or for specific contacts. Make sure to press stop when you're done putting in your pattern. I actually really like doing this for specific contacts. For instance, here's my wife's contact, and if I scroll down, here under text tone, I can set a custom sound for when she texts me, and I can also choose a specific haptic. I can choose one of the custom patterns I made in the sound and haptics menu, or a few of the pre-made options. If you're like me and your phone is always on silent, having those custom vibration patterns mean you can still tell who is texting you or calling you without even looking at your device. And finally, when it comes to customizations, going back to the settings app, let's scroll down to messages. And while there's a lot going on here, we're gonna scroll all the way down until we see filter unknown senders. You can toggle that on and it's kind of like the silence unknown callers. Also, once you toggle that on, you have multiple inboxes here in the messages app. You can see just known senders so you'll only see text messages from your contacts you can go to unknown senders and you also get an unread messages queue which is really convenient here you can just see your unread text messages and you only get this when you toggle on that filter unknown senders i typically stay on my known sender screen all right category number four there's some customizations for the camera that i recommend you dive in there this way it's exactly how you like it whenever you're going to take a picture or video let's jump into the settings app one more time Go back and let's scroll down a little farther until we get to camera. One of the things I would recommend is going to the preserve settings menu. That means whatever you make it, when you have the camera app open, it will stay that way and Apple won't change it the next time you quit and go back into the camera. For instance, typically live photo is on by default whenever you open the camera app. If you prefer to have live photo off, you can say preserve my settings for live photo. The next time you go to the camera app, choose to toggle live photo off and then no matter how many times you exit the camera and then go back in, live photo will always remain off. Instead, if I toggle my preserved settings off for live photo, anytime I go back to the camera, the live photo setting will now reset and be live every time I open the camera. Now, I typically like all the default settings except for macro. Macro control is one thing where I want to preserve the settings. This way, whenever I open the camera app, macro is automatically disabled. I find the minimum focal distance on the iPhone 15 Pro Max a little weird and it jumps into that macro mode a little too soon. So I like having macro mode off by default and I'll enable it when I wanna take a close picture of a flower or whatever. Going back one menu in the camera, a new feature in iOS 17 is the level. I toggled that on immediately. I love the level option. It's actually gonna be easier to show you here on this camera, but the level is now gonna show a white bar on screen whenever you're not level. And once you get that phone level, the line will disappear and you get a little haptic feedback so you know the phone is 
level. Also, if I scroll up, you'll see shared library settings here, and you can have the option to share from camera. This way you have the icon that you can toggle. Of course, you can toggle that off if you never ever want to go to your shared library from the camera, but I also choose to share manually. This means when I go to the camera app, you'll see this little person icon in the top left corner. That means whatever picture I'm about to take is not going to be sent to my shared library, which I share with my wife. If I were to tap that on, now you'll see whatever picture I'm about to take will go to our shared library. She'll see it and I will see it. For a variety of reasons, I like having shared library off by default and I'll toggle it on if I know I'm taking a picture of the kids or we're at an event. Also, if you haven't set up shared iCloud photo library, I highly recommend it. I have a whole video walking you through that process as well. You can check it out above. A couple more settings here in the camera. I believe this was iOS 16 or 17, but there was a view outside frame toggle. If this is on and you're in the camera app, when viewing outside the frame, you'll actually see the top and bottom bars become a little translucent and you can see kind of through that black part. I do not prefer that translucency, so I keep that toggled off. And finally, new in iOS 17.2, if you go up to formats and you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you can toggle on spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. And while you can't view that kind of video here on the iPhone yet, you will get the little Apple Vision Pro icon in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner of the viewfinder. And you can start capturing spatial video now to be viewable on Vision Pro when it comes out in 2024. All right, final settings all about Safari. Safari is probably one of the most used apps for most people. And there's some customizations that can make it a lot better. So if we go to the Safari settings, number one is autofill. If you go to the autofill settings, you can choose the contact card in your app that you want to pull information from. Having this set properly is really useful. Whenever you come across a form online or you're trying to fill it out on your phone, it can autofill your name, your address, phone number, work emails, personal emails, all of that. I recommend choosing a contact card that has all the information you might want to use in an online form. And you can also save multiple credit cards. These aren't necessarily Apple Pay credit cards, but you can put that credit card information in here if you want to be able to use it when you're shopping online. If we scroll down, Back in iOS 16, there was the change in Safari, which moved the tab bar down to the bottom. If you prefer the old style, you can toggle that right there, move it back up to the top. And new in iOS 17 is Safari profiles. You'll see here I have multiple profiles. I absolutely love them. If you go into a specific profile, you can choose the icon, the color, choose the favorites it's using. These do sync across devices. So be mindful of that as you change settings here. I still wish that we had the option to open a new profile page with the start tabs or the favorites specific to that profile, but I'm all about Safari profiles. Have an entire dedicated video to that. Guess what? It's on the channel. Also, I believe this was iOS 17. Scroll down and you can choose to require face ID for private browsing. So next time you're in the Safari app, let's say you want to go over to the private browsing where history is not saved and things are not cached. If you have any websites loaded here, for instance, let's go to a uh, Beard FM. The next time you go back to your public tabs and you're browsing here and you want to go back to your private browsing, it will actually require Face ID to unlock and you have to unlock in order to view the pages that were in that private browsing area. All right, and one final setting here in the Safari settings, you can choose the downloads folder anywhere in your files app or on your iPhone. I actually choose to go to the iCloud drive because if I download something on my iPhone, maybe it's a wallpaper pack, I want it to sync to my iCloud. And choosing that right folder here means you don't have to move it later. And those are 27 settings to get your iPhone just how you like it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, there's lots of settings to go through, or you want to see more shortcuts automations or anything else on the channel, comment below this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe before you go. And if you want to see an entire tour of my smart home, I recently did an update where I had new smart locks, new automations. You can check out that video right up here. And if you do want to get into shortcuts, I have an entire Shortcuts 101 video. It's a really great step-by-step walkthrough helping you build some simple shortcuts and giving you skills to build shortcuts more on your own. You can check out that video out right here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.